Hi, I'm Dwayne Miller with Penn State Extension. I'm an extension educator based in Schuylkill County. And I live on our five generation family farm where we raise corn, soybeans, and hay. Today I'm gonna to introduce you to the process of making hay. I'm standing out here in one of our fields of orchard grass hay that we are going to be harvesting. Making hay is a multi-day process that typically requires three days of nice sunny weather. The first step in the haymaking process is cutting hay. Here I am using a disc mower to cut the hay about three inches above the ground. When we cut hay, it is usually around 80% moisture. However, in order to bale hay and have it store properly without risk of dust, mold, or even fire, the hay needs to be dried down. Typically, hay needs to be at 18% moisture or below when it is baled. Usually, later that same day, after the top of the hay has briefly dried, we'll spread the hay out across the field in a process known as tedding. This allows for the sun and wind to begin the process of drying the hay. On the second day, we will ted the hay again. This fluffs up the hay and allows wetter hay that was on the bottom of the pile to be exposed to sun and wind. We usually ted the hay twice again, once in late morning and once in the afternoon, for a total of three times across the field. Typically on the third day of nice weather, after the sun has dried the morning's dew off the top of the hay, we will begin to rake the hay. This process creates what is known as a windrow. The goal of the windrow is to create a fluffy stack of hay, which still allows the wind to continue to dry the hay down in order to reach our target moisture for baling. We are finally ready to bale. Here we're taking the windrow and feeding it into the baler. The baler will compress the hay, form a square bale, tie the bale with twine, and kick the bale out of the back of the baler and into a wagon that's pulled behind the baler. We can get about 140 bales on each wagon without hand stacking. After the hay is on the wagons, we will unload it into our barn. This allows us to store the hay until our customers will need it to feed their animals. Here, we're just beginning to stack hay in the barn. But as the stack gets higher, we will use a hay elevator to get the bales up to the people who are stacking. If we cut a large amount of hay, we will also typically bale large square bales. Our baler makes bales that are 32 inches high, 32 inches wide, and approximately seven and a half feet long. They weigh about 550 pounds. Using this baler allows us to bale a large quantity of hay in a relatively short time frame. The large square bales are ejected out of the back of the baler and placed onto the ground in the field. We then use a skid loader to gather the bales and load them onto our truck. Trucks will haul 12 bales at a time. The bales will be dumped off back at the farm and the hay will be stacked in the barn. After we bale the hay, we will apply fertilizer to the newly cut fields, which helps the hay to regrow, just like your lawn at home. With the weather's cooperation, we hope to harvest a second cutting and possibly a third later in the summer. Hi, I'm back here in the barn with our final product. Here's a bale of our orchard grass hay, which weighs about 40 pounds. Our goal is to produce high quality hay, typically for the horse market. We'll also sell some of our hay to beef cattle farmers. I wanted to take an opportunity to show you the difference between hay and straw. Straw is actually a byproduct of grain. We'll take a combine, harvest the grain, the straw comes out the back of the combine, and then we'll bale up the straw. So typically in fall, you'll go for a hayride, but you'll actually be sitting on straw. So as you can see, making hay requires a lot of equipment, labor, and especially cooperation from Mother Nature. So the next time you ride a horse, or enjoy a juicy hamburger or a delicious steak, be sure to thank a farmer for providing feed for those animals.